So this week we finally learned when the special election to fill the seat of Congressman Chris Lee will take place, and that is, of course, May 24th if you are marking your calendars. The Republicans at this point are way out ahead. They've already rallied behind Assemblywoman Jane Corwin, while the Democrats are still going through the process of picking their candidate. Joining us tonight to talk more about this race is Erie County GOP Chairman Nick Langworthy. You've seen him before. Hi, Chairman. How are you? Hi, Liz. Thanks for the invitation. Ah, it's good to see you. Actually, you're like, you know, you were just here, I feel like. Weren't the GOP chairmen were just meeting in Albany yesterday, were they not? Uh, yes, we were. We had uh, our first uh, county chairs meeting of the year. So, and uh, did uh, this in and out trip to Albany? Yeah. Did this race come up at all? Was there discussion uh, about this particular race? And are the Republicans feeling pretty good about it? I, I made a brief presentation to the group uh, yesterday, just talking about uh, the process that we went through in, a, in the collaborative fashion that we worked together uh, in order to come out with a strong nominee in Jane Corwin. And, and there's a great sense of optimism of her candidacy. Uh, out of the Republican structure of the state party. Now, the thing that we don't know yet, well, we don't know a couple of things yet. One of the things we don't know is the conservatives. We're not sure what they're going to do. Have you had any more conversations with conservative leaders in the 26th? Well, I think we saw last week, um, you know, Chairman Long, uh, who has the strongest voice in the process, has uh, made it known that he will be recommending Jane Corwin's candidacy to the uh, executive committee, which meets in Albany next Monday, the 14th. Uh, we also saw the Niagara County uh, Conservative Party come out and support Jane Corwin's candidacy. So uh, she's, she's built a great deal of momentum amongst the conservative base. Uh, she had already garnered the support of the Monroe County Conservative Party. Uh, so I believe that she will be nominated next Monday, and that's uh, a strong boost for her candidacy. You know, David Bellavia was actually on the show. He was angling for the Republican nomination. He didn't get it. He was then angling for the Conservative Party nomination. We don't know yet if he will get it. Now that the um, race is officially has a date, for, uh, which would be the 24th, if you're going to be an independent candidate, you have only 12 days to get 3,500 good signatures. Um, Bellavia put out a statement saying that he was reserving his right to an independent candidacy, but we don't know what he's going to do yet. The conservatives making a decision on Monday doesn't give him very much time. Uh, it does not. This is a very daunting task. And uh, 12 days together, 3,500 clean and valid signatures is uh, a very high hurdle to overcome. I, I, I don't envy that position at all. Uh, uh, that would be a difficult thing to achieve even with the full structure of the party behind you. Uh, so uh, b going at, at it your, yourself um, you know, with, with a small group of volunteers would be a difficult task. So uh, really, I, I know that uh, I've heard the Davis campaigns, uh, you know, paying workers to go try to do this uh, right now. It, it's a short window, and uh, I'm happy to say it's raining in Buffalo today. Uh, you are a very mean man. Ja you're talking about Jack Davis, of course. He has said he, tr yes. he used to be a Democrat. Now he's a Republican. He wanted the Republican nod. He didn't get it. When to the Democrats. Doesn't look like he's going to get that either. Now he's going, obviously, circulating petitions for an independent candidacy. He says he will spend up to $3 million of his own money. He's quite wealthy. Doesn't this provide a bit of a problem? If he gets in there and he gets on the ballot, first of all, will you challenge him? Will Jane Corwin challenge him? That's the first question. Well, I, I think that any petitions that come forward uh, are subject to challenge, just uh, like any other election cycle. Uh, you know, they have to be legally valid petitions and contain 3,500 signatures. Jack Davis has run for Congress three now, uh, claiming to start a fourth candidacy. Um, he was rejected by the voters of all parties uh, twice as he was the Democratic nominee and he was denied uh, by primary voters the nomination of the Democratic Party in 2008. Um, there's, there's real proof in the pudding that you cannot purchase a seat in the United States House of Representatives no matter how much money you spend. Uh, it's yeah. up to the voters of this district. Well, and they th have decided not to uh, elect him in the past. I don't believe uh, they will uh, be voting for him uh, this, this time around either. Okay, but ju just to be clear, though, a special election is, is a totally different animal. I mean, obviously, you have fewer people coming out. You have a very tight window. And when you have a lot of money to spend, you can actually move a, sh a small number of people in a, in a very short period of time. I mean, doesn't, isn't it a totally different calculus than a general election or even a primary? 
Well, certainly the mechanisms to, to run the campaign are, are different for a special election. You have to identify your voters and turn them out. I mean, Jack Davis has uh, been a frequent candidate in his political career. Uh, he has uh, failed in, in every one of his attempts to, to win this seat in, in the House, and, and I am firmly confident that Jane Corwin is going to be the next congresswoman from this district. You know, this, this is actually not even a campaign yet because we don't have a Democratic candidate, and, and we still assume that maybe it's going to be Kathy Hochul, who's the Erie County clerk and you've already taken a swipe at her. And then we've had this, this nanny problem issue come up with the assemblywoman. It, was, it's not even, it wasn't even a joint campaign. We didn't even have a date. I mean, why is it so vitriolic out there? Well, it's, it, there's a special election. I wouldn't say it's vitriolic, but, uh, you know, Kathy Hochul is uh, certainly calling around uh, town to the, the donors uh, of the Democratic Party and raising funds uh, for her candidacy. She's, uh, I, I would fully expect that she will be the nominee of the Democrat Party uh, once they make their decision. Uh, I believe their final day is the 19th of interviews. That's probably when uh, she'll be announced as their candidate or shortly thereafter. Uh, they have a 10-day window in which they must nominate a candidate. Uh, the chairs met in Albany yesterday to file the paperwork um, and to uh, convene uh, the Republican chairs to, to nominate uh, Jane formally. And, uh, you know, she's off and running uh, with, with some radio commercials, and she's out working the district as soon as she gets uh, out of session uh, from the assembly. Um, it, it's, it's going to be a compressed campaign. Uh, normally a campaign has a six-month uh, to eight-month window. This is going to be compressed into two months. So uh, I think you're going to see a heightened sense of awareness uh, from the community. You're going to see tons of advertising, uh, but we have to point out the record. And Kathy Hochul uh, has been someone that, uh, when she was a councilwoman in Hamburg, raised taxes 11 out of 12 years she served. Okay, so, hold on. Um, the voters are going to understand the records. Hold on. She's not a candidate yet, so I don't know that it's fair to go around slamming her. But, I, I, I mean, you did also call her Beltway Kathy, if I remember correctly. I, I did, and she uh, she served as a lobbyist as well as, uh, uh, you know, she was a, a Washington staffer for years. She's okay. uh, going to fit right in in the Nancy Pelosi regime if she's elected. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about your candidate just for a second. The, the Assemblywoman was forced, actually, to address this issue regarding a nanny and whether she had had an illegal uh, employee, basically. Do you know, if, is this thing over? Are you certain that she's been vetted to the extent that she needs to be? Uh, Absolutely. I think this is nonsense. I mean, this started out as a, uh, an anonymous caller to a talk radio station said that they thought she had a Honduran nanny. She, she's had no Honduran nanny. She's never employed a uh, live-in nanny in the home. Uh, she, you know, has the family had babysitters? Sure. Has, you know, do they probably have uh, uh, someone that does housekeeping? Yes, but th there, there's certainly no illegal aliens involved here. Uh, it's a ridiculous accusation. And and uh, I believe that Jane Corwin did the right thing, came right out and provided a letter from their accountant, a licensed professional in the state of New York, who says to his professional understanding they have complied with each and every state and federal law that they've been faced with uh, in terms of any, um, you know, sort of domestic assistance they've had. Okay, but so, just to be clear. Uh, I think this is... Just to be clear, Chairman, did you guys vet her? Did you guys do a, a background, thorough vetting, all of the Republican Absolutely. chairman? You did. And you feel comfortable Absolutely. that she's got... We, we look Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. So um, well, you know, we certainly have been through a tough time with our with with the outgoing congressman. We took this process very seriously. Uh, you know, this is this is simple, uh, a faceless accusation from desperate you know multiple desperate candidates that uh, have have tried to feed this through uh, anonymous sources and talk radio. It's 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 really a nonsensical uh, allegation against Gene Corwin. Okay. So what we're going to know basically by next Monday, we're going to have this race actually coalesce finally. We might have a Democrat by that point. We will have a conservative, certainly, and we will be checking in with you periodically before the 24th of May, because then we're going to have a congressperson, whoever that person might be. <laughs> I want to thank you, Chairman, for coming by. Nick Thank Lamberby. you so much.